Hello and welcome to the MHR podcast. I'm Andy. I'm Alice. Alice, what are we talking about this week? So, a little bit of a different topic. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to swing it into the realms of HR. But okay. what I'd like to discuss today is side hustles. All right. Now, that's quite a relevant one, actually, because a lot of people are concerned, obviously, turbulent financial year. There's a budget coming out soon. But yeah. it has been in the news. I've seen a few articles recently to so people talking about like the up, the increase of people taking on like different jobs or side hustles to kind of complement their income. Obviously, lots of different opinions and routes and avenues around that. What have you been reading then? Yeah, so on, on that point, um, it's definitely seen as though kind of the past couple of years, a lot more people are taking up what we'd classify as a second job yeah. um, is what kind of comes under the umbrella of a side hustle. Okay. But what I found in this article, which I, is why I thought it would be quite interesting to discuss today, is apparently 43% of Britain's working population, 43%, actually do have side hustles. Okay, that's interesting. Level. That's a high amount, isn't it? I thought so as well. So that's 43% of everyone who's like of a working age. Or yeah, who's currently or in currently the world of in work. work oh. Yeah, so um, in terms of a side hustle, for those that might not know, mm. um, it's an it's a way of generating extra income. So mm. it could be that you have a second job. Um, yeah. It could be that you're freelancing on something. It could be art and craft. It could be a talent. Does it include then? So obviously, if you are a freelancer and you're doing freelance work on top of another job, or yeah, so like, that's another one. Okay, I suppose it's it counts as like what a se- a secondary level of income opposed to your main one. Yes. Right, okay. Yeah, definitely. Um, and it can come in the form of odd jobs. So even if you're not doing it on a regular basis, but yeah. say you dabble in in something, you know, around Christmas time, you know, it's a seasonal you're way You're thinking of, of like people who are like... An elf. Ara- yeah, around, <laughs> around this time of year, I start getting my old costume out, the elf costume or the Santa costume, and that's what I do on the side around... For, maybe it pays for the presents. You never know. You Christmas never know. is an expensive time of but year, isn't it? It's an it? interesting one because actually seasonal work is on the rise now. People will be recruited for kind of the holidays. Yeah. So it's an opportunity for people to earn additional income or when people are looking for like an actual income, you know, in a, in a more flexible role. Yeah. It, it, if you're working in retail and hospitality, it's the time of year now where those opportunities are kind of coming in, aren't they? Definitely. And I think alongside that with your point as well, going back to the kind of the economy at the moment, um, there's actually a bit of a generational difference mm-hmm. so um another thing this article pointed out um is that like you say with retail staff they tend to be within a certain age bracket you know tend to be yeah. university students looking for that seasonal work um but actually two-thirds of generation z so kind of i think 20 30 year olds i'm gonna guess it falls in that bracket of gen z um 68 percent of them um do want to earn more money from side hustles okay so i think there is probably more of an interest in that younger generation yeah. to whether it you know different reasons but Mm. it could be to make ends meet um or it could be that they know that they have a nine to five but they also want to stretch their abilities in another way i suppose it comes on your own individual circumstance and you 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 don't want to generalize but you would you could make assumptions that younger people in the world of work probably have less kind of family or social commitments or that they so they can be a bit more flexible perhaps if you're living at home or uh, whatever you you've got more time in the evening to go and do different jobs. I don't know, but mm. you're right. I, I can see there's obviously a, a, a different demographic that are probably more in tune to taking up additional work, but also it could come for a, a range of reasons. Yeah, definitely. And I think leading on from that, like I say, we, you, we might not really know the reason why someone's yeah. got got a mm. side hustle, but there is a conversation to be had um, about maybe the impact that has on the individual. Yeah. Um, and I know from a business point of view, um, from HR, they might be looking at what impact might it have on the employee's performance, because yeah. we are talking about an additional yeah. job to the one that they have. Yeah. So on that point, I guess it's kind of, if you were to put yourself and in kind of a HR manager's shoes mm. and you found out that an employee had a side hustle, what do you think would be the conversation that would need to come about? It's a good one, isn't it? I suppose because it's, it could be a really healthy thing. Like if you have, I suppose the dream thing for me is like if you had a hobby you really cared about, but it's not your work and you want it and somehow that picked up professionally in some capacity, you don't want to balance it. But I suppose from a HR point of view, I guess, for the, for the person who's kind of incumbent with your business and they're doing a side hustle, I suppose you need to know, is there a conflict of interests, I suppose, if it's yeah. a very public thing that you're doing? 
Um, and also you need to make sure, you know, tax wise, you're all compliant financially. Like, have you declared this? Yeah. Are we aware of that? Is it in your contract that you need to make us aware of an alternate revenue stream that you've got? How do we make sure it's just in line with all our, what we're doing with our payroll and tax and stuff like no, that? That's, that's a good important. Point, actually, yeah. But also, I guess, um, you know, is, is that going to, are you burning the candles on both ends? Are you okay? Are you managing your time and sh changing between them? Um, just so, because, you know, you're paid to work for us, so we need to make sure we're getting what we need from you. If you feel like you're exhausted because you're of a job, mm -hmm. is that affecting performance? That's one question you've got to ask. Yeah. But, I, I mean, I'd like to think that most businesses would probably be quite encouraging of people doing different things. As long as they're informing people in line with yeah. contract expectations, in line with just wanting to do the best work you can do for that other role, mm -hmm. they, it, it should be supportive, but it should also... I, th I do think you need to make that team aware, right? Yeah, because that's, I think, kind of summarising all of that is I think companies might need to review what their policy is. Yeah. Um, if they, if we're looking at the younger generation are more likely to have a side yeah. hustle, what, what is the company's messaging on that? Yeah. Um, and we're seeing a change in kind of company culture anywhere where people are a lot more welcoming. It's more yeah. of kind of a family unit. It's more kind of yeah. um, supportive. Yeah. So the idea of side hustles is... I would lean towards more that yeah. companies are um, more open yeah. to employees ha say, um, having side hustles. But again, it's how much support that individual yeah. would like, what sort of conversations that yeah. they'd want to have. Um, but there are benefits to employees having side hustles. We talk about obviously the impact it could have on their performance or mm -hmm. of their mental health, but um, you can see it as a positive as well. Um, so side hustles, depending on what they are, they can actually help um, acquire new skills for that employee. I was going to say there could be other opportunities there. I, I guess, if, I mean, if you're passionate about something and you go and do that on your own free time and that becomes a revenue thing and great. Yeah. But if your manager and your main business, your, you know, your main employer is actually under aware of that, they could go, actually, the skills that you're doing over there is actually really helpful for us here. Like... Maybe there's some growth or career development opportunities where you can expand your own role with us to incorporate some of the stuff you're doing on the side there because we can we can give you that kind of passion kick that you want. There's a reason you do it because you like it. Mm -hmm. If we can give you the opportunity to use those skill sets in your main job, maybe that's an opportunity as well. I think so. I think it also is an opportunity for a closer working relationship as well. Yeah. Because if I think as an individual, if you've got a passion that you've pursued and you're lucky yeah. enough that it's generating revenue yeah. um, or you're wanting to explore a new, a new area, I think yeah. to have someone like your manager have an, inve like an invested interest to find out more and want to talk about it, I think it can really help the relationship and, yeah. and open up communication. And then maybe that might kind of tumble into being able to talk more freely about the work that they have and kind of those sort of things. That's, it's, it's a nice view, actually. I really like that. And I, I think it goes to back to everything we say in a lot of these efforts. It's like it opens doors to new communication and understanding, and then you can be a better manager and you can yeah. really support that person. You feel like you're connected to them in a the sense of, you know, I can get, really get how you work and what drives you, which means I can get more of out of you here and you can get more out of us. Definitely. So then swinging it across to HR teams then, mm. um, I feel like it's probably a newer area of, for the business to, like I say, have a mm. policy about or at least messaging so managers know how to handle the conversation. Yeah. But I was just wondering in terms of technology and the way it can support these communications or even spread awareness. Yeah. So for People First, we have communities. Yeah. Um, and I think that's a, a great way that as an individual, we can share a passion. So you can set up a, yeah. a community, we've got a pets one. Yeah. But again, I think side hustles probably come from that it's mm. from someone's interest and then they can obviously pursue it yeah and i thought that the idea of communities might be kind of an avenue where someone can feel like they are being supported yeah. within their workplace yeah and i think yeah because actually you know if you care about that employee and they are doing their own thing on the side and the business wants to help that it's like let's give them an avenue to talk about it because you have to share about it with all the colleagues you know you maybe you work with a thousand people in your organization for your main job and you're doing your own thing on the side Bring them in. You might, there might be people that want to benefit from that. Um, yeah, I think things are good. I know people First is great for that because side hustles are usually kind of either creative projects or something we do on the side for every revenue. But if you want to talk about it, it does facilitate that kind of yeah. social element, I which I really like. I was going to say it feeds into um, a more positive company culture, yeah, I it would does. say. Yeah. Um, 
it helps us become more aware of also the people we have in our organization and the, what drives them and the things they're up to. Yeah. It gives us an ability to share like-minded views or have different conversations that we're not expecting to have, um, which is one of the benefits of working in a larger organization, right? Mm -hmm. Lots of different perspectives, views, cultures coming together to actually help build that company culture together. It's got, a bo I think exposure to that is positive. I think yeah. we need to do that. It helps I us all so. learn, but it helps us understand what we are as a company. Yeah, definitely. So I think in summary, it's um, it's one of those conversations where side hustles are going to start feeding into yeah. how, you know, they are going to become more relevant, I think, mm. as the generations kind of come into, into the company. Um, but what's important is that we have kind of highlighted that the next steps is for HR to think about well, what is what is the messaging yeah. we want to give to yeah. the organization um how do we make managers feel more comfortable um about having that conversation or for employees as well to yeah. notify the um the company it doesn't always have to come from the manager it could be the employee yeah. um, wants to let the company know that they have this side hustle but um i, I would take the side to say that i think side hustles can have a more positive effect um on an individual yeah. and on their work life um then kind of the negative. Yeah, I, I think um, I think I agree, and I think the point is it's on the individual to manage their work, how they're doing that, and they make the choices about the careers that they want to do. Mm -hmm. That is an individual-led thing. I think it's the business res responsibility to make sure they have an open door so that conversation can be held about what they're trying to do, how that links in with their job, how their job can support that, much in the way that we talk about the managers and organisations supporting someone's in individual financial well-being as part of being an employee. That rolls into that. Um, so I think, yeah, for, the, for me, the takeaways are it's it's not something we should be afraid to talk about. I think welcoming yeah. that conversation in, like you say, opens up a great, a healthy dialogue in organization. It helps us learn more about our employees. But it's about making sure that as a business, we understand where do we stand on the ability to work outside your contract for us? Uh, how do we, what process do we need to just make sure we understand it? And then how can we celebrate everyone's own individual hobbies, interests that lead into different revenue streams and mm -hmm. add that to our culture? Yeah, definitely. It'd be interesting how, how many different side hustles are actually part, part of each uh, company. You we know, how do many do we, we have here? We should do a survey, right? Because it's like in other jobs, if you work in certain industries, everyone knows someone in a different job. So like if you need something done on the house, you've always got someone to call Oh, on. I need to we, find a plumber, actually. Well, <laughs> we've probably got one. Hopefully, like, <laughs> Yeah, but we, there probably is one, right? There but must be. There must be, but maybe we should do that in our organisation. We just need to see what other people are doing outside yeah. of when they're working for MHR. I try and do that with my friends' group. Yeah. I need, like, a travel agent, a hairdresser. I'm not going to promise um, that we're going to get discounts, Just, but, you know, <laughs> if we bring them in as guests, maybe they'll do some free jobs for us. That undermines their side, so I'm not going to do that. Oh, yeah. Uh, maybe. But it would be interesting, though, like you say, it kind of summarises that them as individuals yeah. and what they do outside of the yeah. nine to five and the and the suits and. You and know, not that everyone sort of wants thing. to be defined by what they do in their day job. Yeah, you know, true. some people want to because they live and breathe it and they love it. But some people go, you know what, I do this. I'm good at my job, but that's not how I see myself. I see myself as something else. Fine. Yeah. Um, cool. All right. Then, if you've got a side hustle, get in touch. I want to hear what it yeah, is. Uh, I'm going to do some research otherwise. We'll see if we can get some contractors on our list internally that we can get some discounts from. Perfect. Love it. Brilliant. Next week we'll be talking about something different. I imagine. Uh, but until then, stay tuned. Check out the MHR Global website if you want any more advice on anything in terms of legislation, payroll, HR, finance, analytics, mm -hmm. work uh, management, anything. Yeah. It's all there on our Knowledge Hub, so please check it out. I've been Andy. I'm Alice. See you soon.